All right, let's go ahead and continue with a lecture, this time on multiplication rules for probability. So we saw last time when we talked about addition rules for probability that we use the word or in the problems. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna be using the word and, so we'll wanna know what's the probability of two events both occurring as opposed to just one or the other. So just like we started off last time talking about the definition of mutually exclusive, we're gonna start off with a def definition here that's gonna be equally as important, and that's independent events. So two events, A and B, are independent if the outcome of one of them has no effect on the other. A very simple example might be rolling a, or rolling a die and flipping a coin. Each of those events, they have their own probabilities, and they're not affected by one of those happening. Um, so then we'll contrast that with two events being dependent, where if the outcome of one of them affects the outcome of another. Drawing, a, drawing cards from a deck is a great example of that. And let's go ahead and look at two examples here. So I use the example of rolling a die and flipping a coin, but it's the same thing if I say rolling a die and rolling a die. Um, if, I, if I try to roll a, roll a die and I get a six, and then I roll a die and get a four, those events have nothing to do with each other. Just because I rolled a six doesn't mean that I'm going to roll a, a four or anything else on the next one. Another good example of this would be, let's say I flipped a coin 10 times and I've gotten heads every time. A lot of people start to think, okay, I, ha I should get tails in the next one. But that, that 11th flip, the probability of it is still 50% heads, 50% tails. It doesn't matter what happened beforehand. It doesn't matter that you've gotten heads 10 times in a row. Those events are independent of each other. But then we could contrast that with some dependent events here. So maybe I, maybe I draw a jack from a deck of cards and I don't put that card back in. So I leave it out, out of the deck. Then the chances of me drawing a spade from that deck are different than they normally would be because now there's not even 52 cards in the deck. There's only 51 cards. And then also, um, and also this would work for really if I drew any card, right? It doesn't have necessarily have to be a spade. It's just saying, hey, if I draw a card, there's only 51 cards left. And that's a lot different from what happened, um, what happens usually. And so drawing this jack affects this probability of, of drawing a spade. And so these would be two dependent events. What I'll notice here, and what I'll take note of here is that the fact that I'm not putting this card back in. If I were to, if I were to replace this jack back into the deck, if I put the card back in and then shuffled the deck around, now drawing a spade is independent of that drawing a jack. Because I've shuffled the deck, I've put the card back in, it's just like I'm starting from square one. So that would be a slight change from dependent to independent. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. So we're, we're going to roll two dice and we want to know what the probability that the first is a five and the second is a two. And so you notice that word and as opposed to or. And so we, we, we want to we say, you know, what's the probability of both of these happening? And so you could look at this by saying, all right, there's, there's 36 possible combinations that you can get if you roll two dice. There's six for each. So if I multiply the six and six, I get 36 possible combinations. Of all of those rolls, only one of them starts off with a five and then finishes with a two. And so the probability is just going to be that single way of that happening divided by the 36 possible combinations. And so we would just have our answer as one over 36. It's all fine and dandy. There we go. But there's another way we could we could think about this. And it's very similar, um, but it's it's slight, it looks slightly different. So let's go ahead and, and have a new page here. So what we could say instead is that the probability that I roll a five is equal to one out of six. And the probability that I roll a two is also one out of six. So what I could do is I could actually take these and I could say, hey, roll a five and a two has a probability of one sixth multiplied by one sixth. And that's gonna give me one out of 36. And you'll notice we get the same answer. And this line of thinking works perfectly. Um, and you know where, where we're saying, all right, I'm going to roll a five and I'm going to roll a two. So let's multiply those probabilities together. And that leads us to a formula here where we're going to say that 
if two events are independent of each other, then the probability of both occurring is P of A and B is equal to just P of A times P of B. So we're just multiplying those together. In, in this last example, both the probability of A and B were both one sixth. So we multiply those together and, and we get our answer of one over 36. So let's go ahead and look at another example here. And this is gonna be uh, slightly different. What, it, uh, what we're gonna talk about is drawing two cards from a deck. So let's say that we want the first card to be an eight and the second card to be a queen. We want to know what's the probability of that happening. Well, we might we might start off just like we did last time. We might find, hey, let's say the probability of drawing an eight is four out of 52. The probability of drawing a queen is also four out of 52. And so we, we could just multiply these together. Well, this actually leads us to be to be slightly wrong. This answer is slightly incorrect. You'll notice I'm having us try and find the mistake here. and really where this mistake comes in is that when I draw an eight first, that changes the probability that my next card is a queen because there's less cards in the deck. So the issue here is actually right there. And it's and really even more so, it's in this probability in general, but it really has to do with that 52 because there's not 52 cards in the deck anymore now that I've drawn an eight. So we wanna slightly amend this and what I'm going to write out verbally is the probability of A and B is the probability of A, which is that four over 52. There's four eights in the deck out of 52 cards. But now I'm going to multiply it by the probability of B happening, which is the drawing a queen, given that A has already occurred. And so given that A, given that I've drawn an eight already, now there's only 51 cards and four of those are queens. So this probability is four out of 51. You'll notice we get um, a, a very different answer there, uh, but this, this is gonna be the correct answer there. So we have to amend this in the event that these events, that the two events are dependent, which they are here. Drawing the queen is dependent on what happened beforehand. In that event, you have to slightly amend this formula here, this independence formula, we have to slightly amend it to, to saying when the events are dependent, we wanna make sure that, that we say it's not the probability of the second event, it's the probability of B given A. And so, so what you'll notice here is that I'm, I'm using this vertical symbol to say given. We've seen this before, we've seen the symbol before written as such that, both, both are equivalent um, in the context of probability. We tend to use the phrase given instead of such that, but I, either way works, whichever works better in your mind. Um, and so here we have to make sure that we're doing the probability of B given that A has already occurred. And that's exactly what we're seeing here on this um, P of B given A, four out of 51 right there, because we've already drawn a card from the deck there's now only 51 cards left. So the probability that I draw a queen actually goes up just a little bit. And what, 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 what I wanna make clear here is that we have two different formulas for independence and dependence. But in reality, just like we saw with addition, these are actually the same formula. What you can do is instead of having two separate formulas, you could just, you could just get rid of this right here. And you could say that it's equal to P of A times P of B given A. But the, the thing that we're going to note here is that in the case of independence, P of B given A is the same as P of B. If the events are independent of each other, then writing out P of B given A, it's just redundant. B doesn't depend on A, so we can just write P of B. Obviously, in the case of dependence, we have to make sure that we're including that. But if it's easier for you to just remember this single formula and just recognize that, oh, in the case of independence, this turns into just P of B. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, otherwise, we have two different formulas here. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have an independence formula, P of A times P of B. We have a dependence formula, P of A times P of B, given that A has already occurred. Um, and so you'll see this notation here with this, with this vertical sign. Um, be, be wary of that. It just, just is a shorter 
mathematical way of writing the word given. All right, so we'll go ahead and, and call that the lecture on multiplication, uh, multiplication rules for probability and dealing with problems that have to do with the word and in it.